Welcome back. And over the past several weeks, we've been really working very hard at two things. One, getting everyone that we know vaccinated. And the second problem that we've been trying to deal with is long haulers, treating the long haulers. And so today I want to really kind of delve into the long haulers because I think I've got some really good information to share with you. So I want to get right into these long haulers and their symptoms. So there's been lots of surveys and lots of different studies and about long hauler symptoms. But I want to look specifically at the most common symptoms. So table one we'll talk about, you see where it says fatigue, 79% of the people complained of that. Headache was 55.3. Shortness of breath was 55.3. Difficulty in concentrating, 53.6. You see cough, changed taste, diarrhea, muscle and body aches. So those were, and you see the numbers that go along with those. So those were some of the most common symptoms in this survey. If you look at table two, you'll see that it talks about the longest lasting symptoms. And number one on that list is frequently changing symptoms. And so this would be a person that one day they're short of breath, the next day they have chest pain, the next day their muscles are aching, the next day they have brain fog. That was the number one longest lasting symptom, 112 days. And then it goes down to inability to exercise, 106 days, fatigue, 101 days, difficulty in concentrating, memory loss, sadness, shortness of breath. And you see the days that correlate with those symptoms that lasted the longest. Table three talks about symptoms that affected people going back to work. That included fatigue, difficulty in concentrating, and memory issues. If we look at table four, these are the symptoms that cause the greatest level of distress. And that was on a scale of one to five. That included number one, extreme pressure at the base of the neck. That, that came in at about a 4.4. Syncope, and that is when a person just kind of passes out, falls out, 4.3. Sharp and sudden chest pain, 4.2. Brain pressure, 4.2. Headache, 4.2. Persistent chest pain or pressure, 4.1. And bone pain in extremities, 4.1. The reason I wanted to look at those symptoms was because there are people out there that are really suffering. And uh, depending on who you talk to, anywhere from 10 to 30% of the people have or are experiencing long hauler symptoms in different ways. And then they go into their physician uh, and, and the physicians, we really don't know, uh, we didn't know how to approach them, uh, what labs to draw, what tests to get. And a lot of people were being written off as, well, you just have uh, COVID-19 depression or you're uh, kind of being a hypochondriac, or it'll go away, it, it, you'll be okay. And so I want to say that this is really a problem. This is a, this is a disease, this is a, a, a complication of COVID-19. Dr. Patterson, Bruce Patterson, has worked diligently at, at you know, this long hauler problem and he's identified a long hauler index. In other words, there's a test that he can run or that he's come up with that identifies or predicts who's a long hauler and who's not. When people were coming in and they were complaining about their symptoms, I never thought about it being, uh, I thought it was part of the virus or didn't really know what to think about the symptoms that people were coming in. But Dr. Bruce Patterson has come up with the Long Hauler Index, which deals with the immune system. He has shown pretty clearly that the Long Hauler symptoms 
are a result of the immune system cells. Remember the cytokine storm? Some of you may recall that people talked about Rantes um, and, and different uh, uh, immunological cells. There's interleukin-2, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor, interferon gamma, a VEGF. So all of these are cells that Dr. Patterson has figured out a way to differentiate a person who has COVID-19 infection versus a long hauler. A lot of people were talking about Rantes. You heard a lot about Rantes in the cytokine storm. But Dr. Patterson has, through his research, and you can find the paper uh, that he published in the link below, or the paper that is in the process of being uh, published. It's a, pr it's a preprint right now, but you can find that in the link below. Um, he's found that uh, it's not necessarily Rantes, but the main players are Interfere Gamma and Interleukin-2. Those are the two immune cells that discriminate between COVID-19 infection versus long hauler symptoms. And I think that for the sake of just understanding, I think of uh, people that have been infected with COVID-19 as going through two phases. The infection, infectious phase where they were infected by the virus and they had the two weeks of quarantine and the symptoms. And then the after effects, which we now see is a, is, is a real complication, is the long hauler symptoms. And so the long hauler symptoms are a result of immune cells. So the good news is Dr. Patterson has been able to link these cytokines and chemokines with certain symptoms. Hey, that's a really great thing because, you know, the whole etiology or the whole thought that maybe there's low level virus that's you know, creating uh, or, or producing these uh, immune cells, we don't know. There's a lot of research going on behind that. But for one thing's for sure that, that has been done in the research with Dr. Patterson is that there are certain immunological cells that you can link with certain symptoms. That is, um, that's a really great thing for people who have long haulers because now we know more about how to treat, how to go about treating long haulers. You can go to their website. They have put a protocol together for both physicians and patients where patients can actually send, um, uh, go to a lab, get their blood drawn, they receive their blood, they evaluate your blood, those cells, those immunological cells, and find out what in the world is going on in your blood that's causing you to have brain fog and muscle ache and, and, and shortness of breath and cough, all those symptoms that we talked about. Because we don't want people um, to be suffering when we have solutions. And so in, our next, in, the, in the next video, part two of this, I'm gonna talk about the treatments, uh, some of the medications that we can use to shut down some of these or to bring down these immune cells that are out of control so people can get back to work and start feeling better again. And so, if you like this video, push, push, hit the like button, share, and subscribe. We'll see you soon.